Well, good morning. It's uh, great to be with you again and uh, to share with you this morning. Um, because it's just a couple of months ago now that uh, there was a lot of talk on the, the media and there were a lot of discussions about uh, the year lockdown. What had it meant to you? What made uh, differences had it made? And all kinds of stuff was being uh, talked about during that time. And it was just a couple of weeks after the anniversary of the lockdown that I was laying in bed one Sunday morning, actually, and uh, I suddenly had this thought pass through my mind, but it seemed to be significant. And it, it was along the lines of what has the last year done for you in terms of your relationship of God, with God? What What's happened to your relationship with God during lockdown? And I had kind of three uh, senses of, uh, of view. Either your relationship with God had developed and grown and deepened. Uh, secondly, it, it remained static. You just maintained where you were at in your relationship with God. Or thirdly, perhaps, your relationship with God had deteriorated. And I thought that was quite a challenge. And it caused me to begin to think about what had happened to my relationship with God. Was I in a closer relationship with God? Had I maintained or had my relationship with God deteriorated during the year of lockdown? Because I think we uh, all do uh, and have faced the challenge of uh, this period of time. I know I've faced the challenge of not being able to meet together and I've missed three distinct things in not meeting together. The first thing I've missed is the sense of corporate worship. You know, when we worship together and God's presence is manifest amongst us and we know that he's there with us. I've missed that. And for all the wonderful uh, online stuff we've had, I've missed that sense of presence that comes in corporate worship. I've missed that encounter with the word of God. Heard some good stuff, heard some really good stuff, but there's nothing to uh, substitute for that sense of encounter in live ministry of the Word of God when God speaks to you and you respond to the challenge of the Word of God. And, and of course, the third thing is that uh, we were made for relationships and uh, uh, God called us to relate together. And we've even got little things in the scriptures like, you know, lay hands on the sick. And of course, we've not been allowed to do that. Uh, so this sense of touch and hug and relationship, greet one another with a holy kiss, says the, the scripture, and we've not been able to, uh, to do that. Uh, and so I've missed relationship, I've missed worship, the sense of presence, and I've missed that sense of encounter with the Word of God. And so without those issues of being together, how's your relationship with God being. And so I've had to face the challenge of that and say, well, what's happened? Uh, first of all, I got a couple of questions. What's happened to your devotional life? Um, and I look at my personal pr pr prayer life or our personal prayer life. My wife and I have always prayed together and we found that uh, our prayer life has increased actually over this uh, past year. You know, the awareness of need, the, the need to come before God, your awareness of how much you need him and his presence to make it in these difficult uh, circumstances, to cope in the face of uh, new situations that you've never uh, faced before. And, uh, and the whole dynamic of the scriptures becoming so real to you and finding God in, in, in the Bible. You know, uh, Psalm 91, right from the beginning of this, uh, of the lockdown, became so real and precious to us. And we took hold of the promises of, uh, of Psalm 91, that no plague will come near your dwelling. And, uh, and the other promises there of God's presence being with us, of God uh, being with us through difficult times. Uh, Psalm 27 was very, very powerful in our lives. Psalm 46 uh, became very real to us. Be still and know that I am God. Knowing 
his presence in the midst of the difficulties. Uh, we had already initiated uh, uh, a breaking of bread situation for us. Every day, Irene and I, at about nine o'clock, break bread. And uh, uh, that was really a powerful experience for us as every night we, at nine o'clock, whatever's on the telly or whatever's happening, uh, at nine o'clock, we break bread, we take bread, we take uh, the wine and we just remember Jesus so that we bring him into our thinking, into our lives. We, we give ourselves afresh to him. We receive afresh from him. And so, you know, uh, Looking back, our personal life certainly has known a, a, a development. I would say we are, are more intimate in our relationship with God. And then in the area of intercession, uh, we've been so impacted by the news, by the, uh, by the situations, the dreadful situations in which people find themselves. So we found ourselves crying out to God in a way we, we've never done before. The pictures from India, we've been there so many times and uh, people we know are right in the middle of all that's going on. And we've felt that. And so we've cried out to God um, and we've found a new place of uh, intercession. We've had some personal uh, friends and some family who've died this year. None of them with COVID, but uh, but we've had uh, friends we've known for 40 years just suddenly die. We, we had my older brother and my eldest sister uh, die within two months of each other in in May and June last year, uh, uh, and so we've 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 felt the pain of that, and it's caused us to cry out to God in a new way uh, for those uh, that are in need. And I would say that that whole sense of compassion has really impacted us, and an awareness of how much we need a move of the Holy Spirit. You know, Isaiah sixty four. There's a cry from. from from Isaiah, he says, "Oh, all oh, that you would come down, oh God, that you would, uh, you would, you would break in." And that's been the cry of our hearts as we we see that uh, with all our plans and ideas, nothing less than a move of the Holy Spirit is going to is going to meet us in our present need and situation. There's a cry from our hearts for God to come and to break in, and for us to see the supernatural power of God manifest in salvation, in healing, in deliverance, in setting people free uh, from all that's plagued them, seeing people with fear and anxiety uh, come into a new place of freedom as they encounter the wonderful power of Jesus. And then in our lives, in our character, uh, we've seen God work. We've learned some things. <laughs> I guess we've all uh, been challenged about our patience, you know. <laughs> How are you doing in the area of patience? You know, Galatians 5 talks about the fruit of the Spirit. That's the evidence of, of your character being developed and formed as the Holy Spirit works in us, the truth about Jesus. And uh, it talks about love there. And, of course, that whole thing of love, it's been great to hear so many talking about uh, loving God and loving our neighbour and see the expressions of that love. And there's these other characteristics like kindness and long suffering and patient uh, patience or endurance. Some of us have had to learn that. And uh, I trust that we've learned to stay calm and accept the situation. And I think the challenge to the, the kind of hurried lifestyle that we've all lived for so long has just been challenged. And we've just stepped back and we've learned some things about uh, uh, ourselves. And I trust that something's happened in your character. You know, in, in Hebrews 12, it talks about how God works in our character uh, to produce Christ-likeness, uh, how he works and moves. And uh, it says in uh, in Hebrews 12, that God allows us to go through situations in order to develop our character. And in Hebrews 12, verse 11, it says, to those who have been trained by the difficulties they've been through, afterwards that discipline yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness. Uh, and in that verse, we see uh, uh, that situation. Let me just read the verse to you. All discipline for the moment seems not to be joyful, but sorrowful. It's tough when you're going through it. Yet to those who've been trained by it, 
Afterwards, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness. And so character is formed in us through the situations that we face. And so I trust for many of us, we've seen God working in our lives to produce uh, character uh, within us. But now we face the future. Now we're coming out of lockdown. Now uh, we're coming through that situation. And so we face the future. And uh, Hebrews 12 verse 12 tells us what our response should be. It says, therefore, strengthen the hands that are weak and the knees that are feeble. Well, I don't know whether you feel weak and feeble, but I know many of us do as we face uh, the future. But the response is that God will be with us and God will help us and God will strengthen us as we put our trust in him. And the challenge of the future demands a response from us. First of all, uh, that we remember the faithfulness of God. Um, do you know 117 times in the Old Testament? I'll just quote a few. Deuteronomy 8, 2. Deuteronomy 18, verse, verse 9. Psalm 105, verse 5 says, remember his marvellous works. Remember. And so we remember the faithfulness of God. God has been with us. Uh, whatever you've been through, wherever you're at, you're still here. <laughs> you're still you're still standing you're still surviving even if you've been through some really difficult times and remember that God has been with you and he's brought you through you made it you made it I mean the other thing is that God constantly refers uh, the people of God back to the miracles that he's done on their behalf so so there's constant references to the Red Sea and the power of testimony in the midst of what we've gone through is really important that we remember how God has helped us how God has brought us through and then it's a really important time to lay down the disappointments and the hurts of the past and the, uh, there's two scriptures one from the old testament and one from the new that i really do want to bring to your attention isaiah 43 and verse 19 or verse 18 and 19 verse 18 of isaiah 43 do not call to mind the former things or ponder things of the past behold i will do something new now it will spring forth will you not be aware of it? It's important that we lay down the hurts, the disappointments of the past, that we don't dwell on the bad stuff. You know, I listen to conversations and people are blaming the government and this one and that one and the selfishness of this one and that one. Uh, and we can get caught up with all that and start the blame game and feel that uh, we've been badly treated. Well, uh, the scriptures are very clear. Uh, hey, come on, lay down the past. This is a new day, a new day. We need to look forward to the new day. And, and Paul says the same. He says uh, in, in Philippians 3.13, he says, Brothers, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. The last year lockdown is behind us. Forgetting those things, I press forward and upward towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. It is really important that we don't allow what happened to us in the past to dictate what's going to happen to us in the future. That's both as individuals and as a church. Don't let the last year define you. You may have had a bad time. You may be one who's in the third category that I mentioned at the beginning, that your relationship with God has deteriorated. Well, that's okay because you're still here. And so there's still an opportunity for you. I love the, a phrase that has appeared in Christian circles in recent days. It's not a Bible verse, but it's a Bible truth that God is the God of the second chance. That whatever you've been through, however you've responded, whatever situations you've faced, that this is a new day and there's another chance for you. You know, I think of the life of Moses. I mean, what a mess up Moses made of lockdown. You know, he got angry, he murdered someone, he ran away and he spent 40 years in lockdown in the desert. But God came to him again. 
God put, lifted him up again. God called him afresh and anew. And in the last 40 years of his life, he saw the most phenomenal, glorious, wonderful movement of the Holy Spirit, enjoyed a glorious, wonderful movement uh, of God's presence and power in his life. And God can do that for you and God can do that for me. And so it's really important that uh, we we take notice of these scriptures, that uh, we lay down the past with its hurts and disappointments and we take up the future and pursue God and his presence and his purpose. And we're, we're doing a lot of praying and talking about the form of how we will be. And uh, God has given us a great door of opportunity. And I believe that we're going to see God work and move for us. He will do a new thing as we press forward towards the uh, the prize of knowing him and walking with him and being touched by his presence and his power. I had a dream last week. I've dreamed quite a lot during this uh, um, pandemic lockdown situation. I guess that's just confirmation that I'm one of the old men of Acts 2. Uh, but I had a dream last week and I preached this message, interestingly, and uh, there were two guys in my dream. and One guy suddenly went and he burst in out in the middle of, well, I'm coming towards the end of my preaching and he, his arms were on his chest and then he opened his arms and he said, he said, I've got it, I've got it. He said, I, I really experienced the presence of God. He said, I feel free and alive and I feel God and I know his presence and touch upon my life. And he was, he was so thrilled at the encounter that he'd had with God. And then over the other side of the room, another guy, a younger guy, uh, began to speak. He said, I don't feel like that at all. He said, and he put his hands across his chest. He said, I feel like I'm suffocating. He said, I'm full of fear and anxiety. And he was exactly the opposite. And uh, as he shared, I, I felt God speak to me in my dream and say, get the guy who's experienced God to pray for the guy who needs God. And the guy went over and prayed for him and we prayed together and we saw God touch him again and lift this feeling of suffocation. That was the word he used, feel like I'm suffocating. And uh, there was a freedom that came to him. And, uh, and I just felt that God wanted to bring that as a word to us today, that there are some of you who've met God, found God, known him. There's some of you feel like you're suffocating. Uh, some of you are, are suffering with physical ailments, and I, I felt particularly to do with uh, chest pain, with heart trouble, with asthma, with breathing problems. I also felt that uh, uh, there were those who were struggling with anxiety and fear, and it is fascinating how that often we feel that in the chest. It's like we feel that sense of being suffocated. And I felt that God wants to set people free uh, from that and to release you, you know. And a hymn came to mind, a great old hymn uh, that uh, we sang so often uh, in previous generations, but it's worth repeating it. How sweet the sound of, uh, the, how sweet, I better read it. How sweet the name of Jesus sounds in a believer's ear. It soothes our sorrows, heals our wounds, and drives away our fear. He makes the wounded spirit whole. Wow. He calms the troubled breast. He's manner to the hungry soul and to the weary rest. I want you to receive that word today, that Jesus is the one who comes to make the wounded spirit whole. He's the one who comes to calm the troubled breast, that pain, that anxiety, that sense of suffocation, the way you're feeling right at the moment, right where you are, in the room, in the meeting place, wherever you are right now, Jesus can touch you. Just receive from him. Just receive from him. Let him come and calm your troubled breast. Ha. Ah, let him come and make your wounded spirit whole. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you for listening. Amen.